Uh, Ms. Uh, Pata, you are now recognized for five minutes to present your testimony on H.R. 3109 on behalf of the Sealaska Corporation. Kusinyo had to sak suka adi ayahat kaguantanyari yehitak. Um, Chairwoman, uh, Chairman and uh, Ranking Member, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Jacqueline Johnson Peta. Um, my Thinket name is Kusin. I'm a Raven from the Sukha'adi clan from the Raven House in Haines, Alaska. I'm also the Vice Chair of the Sea Alaska Corporation that was created by Congress to implement the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act and holds a portion of our Aboriginal land in Southeast Alaska. Native Alaskans have used migratory birds and birds parts including feathers for thousands of years in the making of our traditional regalia, our tools and handicrafts such as our masks, our garments, our jewelry, our clothing, our dance regalia, our fans and rattles, and hunting equipment such as our spears and arrows. And for just as long as we've made these crafts and, and these tools, we have bartered them, traded them, and sold them as Alaska Natives in a sustainable fashion. In fact, our protocol doesn't allow us to make them for ourselves, but we have to have someone from the opposite clan make them for them, and then we repay them for, that, for whatever it is that we are purchasing, in white man's terms, purchasing for, from them. I believe there are many misconceptions uh, about the use of migratory bird parts and erroneous assumptions that convey a false impression that this amendment will facilitate um, an exponential growth in the use of migratory bird parts are facts. In fact, this is just simply not true. Let me begin by sharing with you that our cultural values guide us on, the, on our land use and our resources. Indigenous peoples have lived in our homelands for over 10,000 years, and our core cultural values ensure that our economic sustainability for the future generations. Those cultural values include Ha'ani, which speaks both to our land use and how we respect our land and our resources, and Ha'shaka. Ha'shaka establishes the links between us and the current generation and our ancestors that dictate our responsibilities and our survival of the future generations. These cultural protocols have ensured sustainability for thousands of years and have been in place prior to the unregulated commercial harvest of migratory birds that led to the near extinction of migratory bird populations. I'd like to offer you some examples of our use of migratory bird parts and feathers. And I believe in my written testimony, I submitted pictures um, for the testimony. But our shakiyat is a headdress, a headdress that uses a few flicker feathers and, and in the one that was talked about earlier from Congressman Don Young, the Shakiyat also had raven feathers, which as you can, does not, in, uh, as you could well know, does not constitute a massive use of bird parts. There's less than 500 traditional artisans with less than fewer of those, much less than fewer of those, that actually produce those same kind of products or hats that we use as feathers. So we do not um, anticipate unchecked growth in the use of bird parts. I also offer you another photo, which is a rattle with the puffin beaks. And the puffin beaks are traditionally gathered after the puffins naturally shed them following their mating season, a sustainable use that does not threaten the population. Alaska Natives are not looking to commercialize the use of feathers, but rather to continue a tradition of culture that respects our ancient cultural values of trade and the principles of conservation that allows a small number of Alaska Native artists who have fashioned painstakingly with great skill, art, handicrafts, and clothing in the footsteps of those who came before them. For us, it's really a benefit twofold. Alaska Natives can revitalize a suppressed cultural practice in an art form while st simultaneously allowing for the sale of these handicrafts, which is a vital source of modest income, um, which we can purchase a few basic, basic few human needs, such as heating fuel in the villages of Alaska. Our communities are economically depressed and suffer the highest unemployment and poverty rates in the country. All we're asking through H.R. 3109 is to be able to begin to help ourselves in a very small way by providing a modest income to the severely impoverished communities and traditions. So I just want to speak real cl quickly in closing to the comment that you said earlier about the Migratory Co-Management Council. There are 12 members of the council, as you noted. All 10 of the Native members agree with us. The two others um, were the federal government um, that didn't, didn't uh, support that provision. 
and I want to let you know that they had made a, they have made a agreement that they only put forward recommendations that they unanimously consent to. So therefore, we need this bill to move forward um, and not wait for the recommendations to come from the Migratory Bird Co-Management Council. Thank you. Gunish Chish.